Okay, so here I am. The The beginning's always weird because I never know how to do it. But here we are with me and my wife, Erin, on another episode of Flight Tales. Woo. Well, Dustin can ask questions too. Yeah, please. Pro Dustin. We'll see. He normally does. Okay, so I guess I'm supposed to talk about myself, apparently. Yeah, I don't fly airplanes. Yeah, Aaron's just here to talk about some of the stories that she has. She has some different stories than I got. Been around a while. Yeah, long time. Back in college, right? 2006? Yeah. Or well, five. I started yeah. school before that because I graduated 2003 and then... Northwestern State had a aviation program straight out of high school. Right after high school, went to Northwestern, started flying. I didn't start flying till 04. Because I remember, so uh, my parents were like, uh, you're going to just do your classes and then not going to fly. And then I remember, uh, I think I kept begging them to fly because I was ready to go up and do it. And then they said, okay, on your birthday. And my birthday was October 1st. October 1st, 2004 was my first flight. So it's been, well, we're not quite 20, 20 years yet. We're almost there. And you had your private before we met or by the time we met. Oh, yeah. By the time we met, I think I was working on instrument. The instrument took a long time. Yeah, I can remember the instrument being very time consuming. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a lot of. So I got my private, I think that was in uh, November of 2004, uh, because I'd finished up everything, because my instructor would call me, say, hey, I don't have any students, you want to go fly? And I'd say, yeah, let's go fly, because we had like a set days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday kind of deal, but if he didn't have anybody on Thursday and Tuesday and Thursday, then he would call me so I'd go fly I ended up finishing up the first year and then I stayed a week longer to do my check ride but then it ended up whatever weather I think it was or whatever so I ended up saying oh I gotta go back to Lafayette because I gotta work. yeah you're driving back and forth a lot yeah at that point yeah and so I went back and worked and then I when I came back to school it took me a while to get going again and get my check ride done. So I think it was November of 2004. Okay. So when did y'all meet? Uh, we didn't meet then. She no. was still in high school. So I graduated high school in 2005 and started Northwestern that fall. And then we met like September of 2006. Somewhere around there. Yeah. So I had my private and then I, when I was trying to work on my private, that took a while because I think a plane broke. I wasn't in a hurry because I was going to be there for four years anyway. So, and then I think I stopped for a while because the plane was still broken and then I started again and, and I was still working on instrument when I met her. And then me and Michael started flying together to finish up. And then you graduated college in... Yeah, well, I graduated college, and then I still didn't have my license. But you went to ATP at that point? <laughs> Where did you go, ATP? No, I, so me and Michael finished together. Our flight we did our We did our instrument together, then we did our commercial together, and then we needed to do our CFI, and we didn't do it at Northwestern because they didn't really have a CFI program. And so then we went to American Flyers in Atlanta, me and That's Michael. Right. And we did like the two-week course and uh got our well no we didn't they didn't it was weird they didn't even want us send us uh to do our check ride then for some reason so we had to come back to Natchitoches to do it and we ended up doing it I don't know when he did his but I did mine in January so where did you first teach I don't remember Northwestern you were teaching at Northwestern they still yeah. had the program yeah I worked there for like eight months because I started in January, and then in May, I think I went down to fly by night and did my multi-engine. When I was down there, I asked her for a job, and then she she said, yeah, I need somebody that can be an instrument flight instructor. So then I was like, okay, well, I'll just go back and get my instrument uh, CFI. And so I went back, and I did that with Cliff. And then once I got that, I think it was August, when I moved back to or moved to Hammond to do to work down there 
No. September. Yeah, so you moved to Hammond, started teaching at Fly by Night, and then I moved to Shreveport Yep. at the same time. You were in nursing. Yes. Then yep. I can I can remember driving. I know. What however you many was miserable. five plus hours. Yeah. <laughs> I did most of the driving. We had a long distance relationship. Yeah, for a while. Yeah. And then you worked there for a while. Oh, no wonder it worked out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's been the story. Yeah. <laughs> long distance. Yeah. Yeah. I worked there for two years because I wanted to go to Acadian. Now, when were you in New Orleans? Oh, that was what when I stayed with... Yeah, Keith and Kristen. Oh, I stayed with Kathy. them for a little bit and then I stayed with Kathy. Yeah. But My I aunt. Was that when you worked oh, at Fly by Night? That was when I was at, when I first moved down there to yeah. work at Fly by Night for like a month. So you commuted from New Orleans to yeah. Hammond. Yeah. And then you moved to Hammond. Yeah, because I was broke, had no money. <laughs> <laughs> had to live with people where I can bum a room from. <laughs> so yeah, that's, yeah, you went to Shreveport. Well, you were in nursing, right? Right. I didn't really live in New Orleans. I mean, that was I was still working in Hammond. And then I wanted a job at Acadian Ambulance, flying the King Airs. And uh, that's when Cody and Michael had a job at Acadian Ambulance. Yeah, they worked there first. And I wanted one early on, but I never had my multi. I didn't have my multi when they had an opening. So for 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 those people like me who think Acadian Ambulance and think. Helicopters, ambulance, like oh, oh well, I ambulance? get a lot of I get a lot of people that think Acadian ambulance. Oh, you flew helicopters? No, I didn't. I flew. They have airplanes, and then most people they don't realize that Acadian ambulance has airplanes, and so usually they ask, "Well, what did what do they do with the airplanes?" Well, oh well, we did some medical flights, but we also did charter flights. So if somebody wanted you to fly them to a business meeting in Houston, we would do that kind of stuff. Or on a vacation somewhere, we would do that. For the company. Not all no, for the company. Chartered. It would be they it, charter. It would be like whenever somebody wants to charter a boat, you're chartering an airplane. That part of the business is actually called executive aircraft charter company or something like that. It's something it's it's a different name. Gotcha. So but it's owned by Acadian Ambulance. Yeah. And then Acadian Ambulance company like executives would use it too. You know, Richard Zuslag, we'd take him around wherever he needed to go. And then all the other executives, if they need to go. A lot of LSU stuff. Yeah, Houston or whatever. Acadian. Yeah, we did a lot of LSU stuff because they had some kind of deal with LSU where they would like any kind of recruiting or stuff like that. We'd fly them. He flew less miles. Yep. Coach flew o. less miles. Coach O. But he wasn't like when I was flying there, he wasn't head coach yet they had brought him on as a recruiter i think coach yeah so i started at acadian ambulance in 2010 two years i think it was september so it was two years after or after i went to fly by night i was at fly by night for two years did you like that he was a pilot was that an attractive quality or were um, you like oh, i don't think i'm not a a flyer not particularly i don't i don't i'm not crazy about it i, I go but i don't necessarily you know, it was the wild parties. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so I thought it was cool. I mean, we had we met their mutual friends, and a lot of them were pilots, so it was kind of a strange normal around us. Um, I guess that's not normal, but in that little circle, it was everybody or half of us, half of them were all pilots. So I was flying with Michael, and Michael was the one that was. Yeah, y'all were all hanging out at Michael and mm -hmm. Kendall's house. So, do I know Michael? No, we talk about him a lot. I want to get yeah, him he on lives the podcast. In Shreveport. Maybe, maybe or one day, Shreveport, if he listens it's... to this podcast, he can come on it. He should. He should. I told him about it. Yeah, Ryan was the weird friend. No. Are we talking about that one? Oh, we have to now. I want to hear it. <laughs> it's nothing else. No. I don't know if we should put this on the podcast. I'll say it. I'll say it. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I I was friends with this particular group of people for a, for a good while. Most of the summer, six wasn't months, yeah, like six months maybe. Um, and then where and when was this? So this was in Natchitoches when we were at yeah. Northwestern, and I was living with some sorority sisters. And then next door, Michael and Kendall lived. So we met, started hanging out, and then maybe six months in ish, Ryan 
started hanging out. Yeah. He was like hanging out. We were like hanging out separately. So I was hanging out with our group of friends and then he would hang out with our group of friends. But he never came around for whatever reason. I would reason. come out around every once in a while. I think yeah. Michael invited me over one time. Yeah. And so I just. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't come around all so the time. He so. came over one night and a friend of mine had been hanging out with Michael. And so Ryan walks in the door and, you know, he's very quiet and shy. So he yeah. goes, <laughs> who is it? The one in the red shorts? <laughs> That's a Ryan. Which is my friend. <laughs> and so I'm like, hey, you know, like they're talking about <laughs> you. <laughs> um, so that was my first introduction to Ryan. The backstory to that was, you know, I was flying with Michael. So and we would go to this other girl's house who would like cook us food and stuff. So me and Michael and we would all hang out with this other girl. And she, and I guess she was asking him about this girl he was with. I'd already known about her. And so when I went to Michael's house, I said, oh, oh, is she the one in the red shorts? Which is not you. It wasn't It her. wasn't me. It was her friend. No, it was there my was friend. There was two girls there, and Aaron was one and the other. But yeah. he was so inconspicuous. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> Just so discreet. So Ryan already one, knew that. Well, Ryan's that, one of those people who you whisper, hey, what's that person's yeah. name again? He goes, oh, yeah. that's Jack. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah. believe you don't remember yeah. his name. Hey, Jack. Come here, Jack. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. And so um, that was the first, inter well, not interaction, but that was my first exposure to him. And so when we were I, playing poker or something. We were playing poker. Yeah. So. And the next, the next one I remember is hanging out at some friend's house one night and it was a lot of people like it was, yeah, 10, was a bunch of 15 us. people i don't know we were hanging out and we were just all kind of in the living room area and then ryan for some reason ryan decides he's gonna well, you gotta lead up to the whole the back door yeah. and our friend the same one in the red short yeah had said um hey y'all like don't you know go out the back door because there's no stairs yeah there's no steps so and it's and it's and it's like it's not it was like a, a double wide, the front of the extra trailer large was level. trailer. Yeah, the front of the trailer was yeah. like level with the ground. The back of the trailer was like a cliff. Yeah. So it was like on a hill. And you didn't hear this warning. No, I heard the warning. Yeah. Oh, I heard the warning. Yeah. So the warning went out about no yeah. steps. And next thing I know, I was kind of like across the room and I look over and Ryan's like at the back door and I, he opened it and he's like, hey, y'all know this lights out? Yeah. So for whatever reason, he was going to fix the light and he just, I saw him and then he was gone. gone. Like a cartoon. Dude. Yep. <laughs> so he was gone. So <laughs> I just, I laughed for no, days. I got this, y'all. <laughs> yeah. I laughed for days. For days. <laughs> picturing him just there, gone, mm -hmm. you know? And for whatever reason, I was on the front half of the house, like 20 yeah, minutes later, so and here he comes limping. Yeah, well, so from around I, the house. I was actually fine from the fall. And then I was good. I was going to. And then one of the other guys there was like, hey, let me help you back in. So I I took his hand and I was he was going to help me back into the trailer. Well, then he was being goofy and he like put slack in his arm or something. And I fell back and I, I sprang my ankle. Yeah. So he comes limping around. And yeah, it was you and and uh, me and Kirby. Kirby, yeah. And we yeah. were sitting in the front yeah. talking, and it, yeah, here you come limping around, and and so then the next time I saw you, we and were that was all, it. That was that was it. So that still was almost no yeah. interaction. Yeah. So didn't I mean I might have asked you if you're okay. I hope I did, but um, I don't remember. I don't remember. I, I remember talking to y'all, but I don't remember. <laughs> I laughed like, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I remember y'all telling me how y'all laughed. Yep. For uh, days. For days. For days. Y'all would just laugh just yeah, randomly about it. We were just like, it. hey, you remember that guy? I don't so even know. So that's how she recognized I don't him. even think we knew your name. <laughs> she didn't no. know your name. No, no, I didn't know your name. And so um, the next time I saw you, I think was when we were all going out on the boat. And Oh, I came over. You came over with model. crutches. And Wait, did split. I have crutches? I think you had crutches. No, I had my leg. And I remember my leg being in you the like. You at least had a like splint. A, a, a yeah, yeah a like bandage, a bandage splint brace. Yeah, yeah. That's and right. so we were all go going on the boat, and they asked like if you wanted to come, and you're like, no, I guess I probably, probably should, should not go. Yeah, you know. So we all went on the boat without you. Yeah, I went. I guess I went back home. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how she first met me. Yeah, yeah and we did the long distance long thing distance for a while for, yeah. because I was in Hammond, you were in, and Shreveport. then we did, and then I moved back to Natchitoches, and we did Natchitoches to Lafayette. For a couple of years. So what'd you go to Northwestern for? 
So I went initially I was in nursing and then I graduated with a psychology degree. And then when I moved here, I went back for nursing. So currently I'm a nurse, but right. Yeah. You moved. Yeah. The long distance thing. You were here. No, I was never here until after I got married. Yeah. So long distance, she was in Shreveport going to clinicals. I was yeah. in Hammond doing working at the flight school. Yeah. And then she switched her major to psychology and then moved back to Natchitoches and I was still in Hammond. So when I started at Acadian Ambulance in September of 2010, I moved to Lafayette. And I moved back to Natchitoches in 2010. Okay. So, yeah. So we did that for a while where I was in Lafayette, she was in Natchitoches. And then, well, we went to Dallas, didn't we? Went to, we got engaged in Dallas. Yeah. Went to a nice <laughs> did, fancy. Did we go in da- yeah, Dallas? Yeah, no, we went to Dallas. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we had this nice fancy restaurant. He almost killed me with a champagne bottle. Yeah. What? He proposed. So I decided to get champagne. <laughs> yeah. And so I was, we were, we were, weren't we in the hotel? We were in the hotel. That was after the dinner, I guess. Yeah. And then I was trying to get the cork out and I think it went and flew off and almost hit her in the head. It was like a really low ceiling, like by the bar area. And you like popped, popped the it champagne off and, it just and then flew it almost. I think I proposed okay. right after that. Yeah. So then uh, we got married in uh, April of 2011. April 30th. I was working here at Acadian Ambulance. You know, I started in September. Yeah. I don't... What, what month was it that I proposed? I want to say May. Okay. So May of 2000. No, oh, that... Yeah. yeah, May of 2010. Oh, okay. So we were already about to, yeah. When I, yeah, when I got the job here, we were already planning to get married. Yeah, I got the job at Acadian Ambulance, and then, um, yeah, then our wedding was in April on April 30th, 2011. We had a pretty big wedding party, like the bridesmaids and groomsmen, and the night before the wedding, you know, we're we go out after the you know, rehearsal dinner or whatever. And we're seeing all of our, you know, other people that we know, you know, from college or wherever. And Ron's like, hey, I'm getting married tomorrow. You want to come to the wedding? (laughs) And yeah, sure. So we had a lot of extra people show. Yeah. You know. Well, Cody was already invited. Cody was already invited. He was an usher. It was a lot of aviation people. Yeah. Um, that we had seen. And then so after the rehearsal dinner, we went, went out, hung out. And then I went home. They continued to oh, go hang have out. fun, hang out. <laughs> um, but I guess there wasn't enough room in the vehicle. So Ron decides to ride in the trunk. Who was with you? Somebody else told some of this story. That well, was Cody, Cody was Cody. probably Cody part of it. Had yeah, been Cody. Cody was. He asked, do you remember being in the trunk? I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then you said you opted in to being in the trunk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was no room in the car. Yeah. So I was like, so I'll get in the trunk. Of course he's going to be in the I'll trunk. I'll get in the trunk. And they're like, okay. Yeah. So I got in the trunk and we drove to the. Yeah. They all let you do yeah. like <laughs> the, the groom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Don't worry. <laughs> And so then the day of the wedding. Wait, this wasn't the day of the wedding? Well, the night before was the trunk night. Oh. And th- that was after the rehearsal dinner. You and didn't know the, that happened. No, I didn't know that happened until... Although everybody whenever, found the out, next though, day. Somebody was telling somebody. Yeah, the next day. And then... Because um, they probably told all your family. Yeah, my aunt came up to yeah. me. I heard you were in the trunk last night. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so okay. Somebody was she wasn't that. even there. Um, <laughs> and we got... We, our reception was in this, like, older plantation home. And the reception was over. And we were all going to go hang out. And so everybody's pretty much gone. And I'm like, where's Ron? Like, oh, yeah, where, this part. where is he? Nobody could find him. You know, he's not answering the phone. Almost everybody had left except for a friend of mine, her mom. Ryan and Clark was still Ryan there. Clark. Yep. And this was like very early cell phone. Like we may or may not have had text messaging. Like, I don't know how you let anyone know, but he was locked in the bathroom. Stop. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, this older plantation home with this really old door and doorknob, yeah. the door didn't shut all the way. And so, you know, people went in there, they would just kind of like shut the door, pull it closed, but not like well, it all would, the way. It would like rub at the top or yeah. something. Like it so, was, it was something where you, you had right. to really but pull it if course, you wanted to. Ryan, 
he's going to pull that sucker closed yeah. until it latches. Uh, and the handle came off. And the handle came off. Yeah. <laughs> of the so, door. Like this brass handle comes off the door. So I went to the bathroom and then I was like, well, how am I going to get out of here? Did you have your cell phone? No, I didn't. I don't think, <laughs> I don't remember having a cell phone, but I saw a window and I was going to like, like SOS, like yeah, or Morse open code it or out whatever. the window. <laughs> shirt out of yeah. the window. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I had a plan. I was coming yeah. up with a plan. So, so you, you went into the bathroom, pulled the doorknob off, yep. and was like, oh, I still got to pee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'll figure that out once yeah. I get done. Yeah. So I don't know who found you or how we knew or what happened, but um, the chef had to go and get a knife and take the hinges off the door. I must have been knocking on the, the door. To take the whole door yeah. off the wall to get you out. Do you remember at all how long you were in there? It wasn't that long. Yeah, it like it, it, like it, 10 I, minutes. I, I must have been banging on the door or something because the, win the window, you know, it was an old house. So, like, the window didn't look like it opened or I could fit through it or something. So... I figured I'd just bang on the door. Maybe somebody will hear me eventually, you know? Yeah, I think you, you said like you didn't think it was a big deal when it came off because you were like, oh, I'll just put it back on. Yeah. But then realized that. Yeah, yeah this, this ain't going to work. So, so that, that was, was our fun. wedding. Yeah. In that a trunk fun. and in a bathroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after that, she moved in with me. Yeah. <laughs> Where did we go after that? We went to the Cove or something. Yeah, we went to the Cove. Yeah. Because I remember your parents showing up and that was. My dad, my mom. Oh, yeah. She, she probably was already in bed. bed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, she moved in with me after that. Our one bedroom apartment. One bedroom apartment. And we tried to, you tried to get a job with. Uh, Acadian. Yeah. Multiple times. Multiple job Multiple positions. times. Multiple interviews. Well, we thought, oh, it'd be easy to get a job because you already work for Acadian Ambulance and you can talk mm -hmm. to your boss. And that didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Yeah. No, it didn't. Yeah. So then you decided, hey, I want to go back into nursing. So it was either go for my master's in psychology or I was going to go back for nursing. And at the time I was kind of, to me, like it would be faster just go back for nursing. So I did that instead. And I didn't want to take the GRE. Yeah. So she ended up going into uh, we, what there was a, it was the technical, Acadiana technical. Acadiana technical, but I was the first class at SLCC. Yeah. So, so it transferred, it changed over. Yeah. They bought, bought it out or whatever happened, you know. So then you got your LPN license. Yeah. And then I was still working at Acadian Ambulance. I was uh, not getting paid a whole bunch at Acadian and like, I had a bunch of hours and I was, thought I was qualified to be a captain. And so I was like, well, I'll just go back into flight instruction and do that. But I wanted to have my own school. Did you know anything about having your own school when you wanted to? No, do I just like working at Fly by Night gave me the the I mean, I always I like business stuff. So like I always kind of got into like I was always interested in that stuff and like I knew it's the only part of aviation that I felt like I could just jump into, you know, and own the business. Northwestern was shutting down. They were shutting down their aviation program. So then I, uh, so they were auctioning off all the airplanes because the state owned all the airplanes. And so the 152, 64 Papa was one of them. So I was like, oh, that's, I know that plane. And it was one of the good, like brand newer, air, not newer, but it was, had a good engine, you know, low time engine. It was pretty good shape, looked nice, you know. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm going to just bid on that one. And so I bid on it and then somebody else bid the same amount. Well, I knew he bid the same amount because they sent me, I guess it was through emails, but yeah, it was through emails. So I must have done it on, maybe I did it online. I, I can't like remember exactly. you had to exactly. submit something though. Yeah. Like you had to submit a form. Maybe, or, yeah. I don't remember. But I remember through emails and they said somebody else bill, bid the same amount. And so then I had to like, man, I don't want to, you know, overbid. I don't want to pay too much. And so anyway, I just like, oh, I guess this number is good. So and I'm, 50 cents. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I bid higher and then I didn't hear anything. So then Acadian offered me the captain position. Oh, so, boy. So initially I was a like first same officer. Day. Like yeah. same day. Yeah. So they offered me the captain position and I hadn't heard anything about the airplane. So then I was like, well, I guess I'll take this, you know I mean? So you thought since you didn't hear anything. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Might as well. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it, got it. It, yeah so then I, uh, so I didn't hear anything. So I, 
It's like, well, I guess I'll take this position. I'll go be captain on the King Air, you know? Because that is what you would have rathered, right? Like you wanted that. Yeah, I would have. I would have. I was ready for it. I was ready for it. Yeah. Then I think that evening I heard about, oh, you got the airplane. And how'd you hear about that? Like another email or another email (laughs) after I'd been offered the captain position and accepted it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And accepted it. So then I was like, well, I guess I'll do both, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The start of doing both. Yeah. And so, yeah, but initially it was like, I'm going to quit and I'm going to do this, you know, and then. I don't even think you knew where you would have done it out of or. No, I didn't have no, any there plans. There were no plans. There were no it plans. Was, we're I'm just going to wing my this job thing. And I'm buying an airplane. Yep. Buying an airplane. Yeah. We're going to wing it. Let's yeah. get it. So I think I, I did work out of here for like in Lafayette because they got the free parking and I was trying to work out a signature at, or it may not have been called signature then. It's probably Millionaire. Yeah, I was a millionaire, a landmark, one of the FBOs. And, and when I talked to the manager, he told me uh, there was already a flight school here in Lafayette. So he told me, he told me, well, you know, I can't let you just use the conference room. I'd have to charge you for it. And it was the same rate I was charging people an hour to do instruction. And I was like, well, I'm not going to stay here. And so I ended up going down to New Iberia because they had, uh, it was more friendly for a small business. So I started out in New Iberia. And yeah, I started out at the Seaway. I put the plane in the Seaway. So the Seaway in New Iberia is uh, the water runway. So where s- planes with floats could ah. land on over there on the Seaway. Like they had the runway, which was a strip of water, and the land- planes would land on it. And then they had a hangar there, so I would tie the plane down in front of that hangar. Like I didn't have hangar space. I wasn't rent- renting any hangar space. I still had to find students. And John was my first one. John. Oh, John. Yeah, so I built it up from there, and I started getting more and more students. Ended up uh, getting an office in the FBO in Pelic, which was named Pelican Aviation, uh, down in New Iberia, and getting a little office up there and had my plane in the hangar. I ended up moving from the seaway across the field to another place. Moving on up. Moving on up. getting, And then I bought the 172, uh, 752. What year is this? Probably 2014. Yeah, because I graduated nursing school 2013. And we may have been living in Cade at that point. No. Because we didn't move to Lafayette until 2015. Yeah, we didn't move to Lafayette until 2013. Oh, I thought it was 15. No, we were living. So we lived. So It, it was it, 13. Yeah, so Cade was. We lived in that apartment till two thousand till the lease was up for the full year. So I moved in in September twenty ten, and then twenty eleven, September twenty eleven, we moved to Cade. And then, I guess we lived there for like a year and a half. Like a year, yeah. Beginning of uh, beginning of twenty thirteen is when we moved. March bought the house. Yeah. And you were in school during that. Yes, I while was while we were in Cade. Yeah. yeah. And you were still at. I was still at Acadian and I was running the flight school at the same time with the 152. So it took me a little while to buy the, yeah, so I think it was 2014 I bought 752. So it took me a little while to get enough more money to buy the 172. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then I got into, I was still working for Acadian until twenty, the end of 2016. And I was still running the flight school. And I bought the second 172 in, 20, in 2016. And then uh, we were still in, in uh, New Iberia. And then in 2017 is when I started flying for the LeBlancs. And that's flying the Piaggio, the TBM, and the... Bonanza. But you flew the Lear at Acadian? Oh, yeah. At Acadian, I flew the Lear. I uh, flew the Lear 35, and I flew the Lear 45. And, yeah. So, the King Air, Lear 35, Lear 45, and then moved over and flew that uh, flew the Piaggio, and the TBM. All the while having the flight school, doing two jobs. So going way back to my first flight with you. Oh, man. We're going. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're going you way, way back. You rented a Piper? It was a Cessna. A Cessna? At Northwestern. I feel like it was a Piper. Nope. 
feel like it had two engines. It had one. Okay. The f- um, <laughs> <laughs> it was so much bigger. This in my was head. well, no. This is um, that was a different flight. I did. I think yeah, I took you up okay. in the in the multi, but that was you a different did. one. Yeah. Okay. Whatever airplane we flew, and we came down here. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, we. So, I guess we were coming down here for the weekend or whatever, yeah. and, and I decided to rent one of the one seventy twos. We rent the one seventy two. I've never flown. I flew commercial when I was very young. Barely remember it. I've never flown anything else. So we fly. Ron gives me no like. I was a private pilot at he this time. Like I pilot. hadn't gotten my. This must have been when we first date. When yeah, we first date. You just show up that you were a pilot. Yeah. I was like, hey, you want to go yeah. for a ride? We'll go down and fly down life. Yeah, yeah. You know? So the whole time I'm in the airplane and I wouldn't speak because I thought that the radios could hear me talking. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even tell you no. that. So like I'm just silent the whole way there. I wasn't an I, instructor. So I, I sat just, like a statue, very still, because yeah. I was scared if I like looked out the window that I'd tip the airplane over. And so I finally got the courage to like say something. And it's like, oh, look how pretty over there's a rainbow. And he looks at me and he goes, that's not good. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? Like, why is it not yeah. good? <laughs> well, I didn't, so I didn't realize, I didn't realize she was nervous. Like I didn't realize that she was scared to look over. She, all that stuff I found out after we landed. Yeah. So like, I, you know, that's something she, I guess I was just talking the whole time. Yeah, and I was just, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I didn't realize she was nervous. I thought she was kind of listening to what I was saying. And I thought it was silent the whole time. Yeah, I was no. like, how did you not? No, no, Ryan no. would talk. Yeah, to I a was just wall. talking, you know. And, I mean, and then she'd talk about this uh, rainbow, and I was like, "Oh, that's not good because that's there's probably a thunderstorm." That means close. rain and yeah, thunderstorms. Yeah, rain or whatever. But we landed in Lafayette, and I think she told me after we landed that all this stuff about how she was nervous about looking out the window and didn't and thought the people. Yeah, so th- I think that's. But I didn't realize all that stuff either. Like you know, you don't think about that stuff as a go through training and you don't think of what other other people are thinking. I think the next time we flew was I was a CFI. So I did a little more talking yeah. about what I'm doing and why I'm yeah. doing this and all that stuff. Yeah. You relieved a lot of my like commercial flying anxiety because when we would go and I used to hear like the gear, you know, going down and I'm like, oh my God, we're going down. Like the plane's going down. And so, you know, I'd ask you what that was and you tell me and, um, I can kind of tell now, like, oh, okay, we're descending. We're, you know, I, I can feel a lot more in the airplane just being, you know, around the airplane so long. But so that helps. I think it helped ease and ang- yeah, a lot yeah. of anxiety with me. Yeah. So I don't that that's I guess the next time I flew with flew you was in the multi. Yeah, I, a Piper, right? I feel like it was... Maybe we did fly the Piper. It was but from I, I remember uh, Sharon flying, from Fall by Night. Yeah, you but I remember plane. flying the... Did I fly... Did we fly in the Piper or we flew in the Twin? Well, I remember two, different airplanes. I remember two... Okay. I don't know. Two propellers She flew whatever. multiple times yeah. after, but not until I got my CFI. <laughs> yeah. It was a while. I oh, waited a while. Oh, do you want to tell the story about how we ended up in Alexandria on a trip? When I was with Acadian. A, with it, when I worked for Acadian. So he was going on a trip for Acadian, um, an oh. air med. No, 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 no. You were taking the plane, transporting the plane or doing something with the plane for it, it, The plane broke. And yeah. so we, me and yeah, you like were- like to fly in broken airplanes. Yeah, well, That's they fixed fun. it. They fixed it. Yeah. And then- <laughs> That's another thing I can remember vividly, like what? just throughout this whole journey is you're like, yeah, they fixed the plane. Now I got to go up and fly it. And I'm like, but what if it's not really fixed? Like yeah, but it wasn't you know, a, it wasn't a flight thing. It wasn't. My, a, yeah, my thing is why you got to go fly it to make sure it's fixed. To I'm make sorry, sure it's what? fixed. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, but what if it's really not fixed? Well, they had fixed the plane, and we were we they it had they left it in Alexandria, so we were going up to pick it up and bring it back to Lafayette. Yeah, so we go. You're like, yeah, it's just gonna be like real quick. Drive to Alexandria, fly back. You yeah, know, but be before we left, they told us the dispatcher told me. Well, I might have a flight for you going to Arkansas and uh, doing a medical. So we knew that leaving here. Yeah, that it was a possibility. Yeah. So we end up getting up there and I do my pre-flight, check the plane and everything looks good. And I was I was like, uh, call the dispatch and I'm like, hey, so I'm ready to go. We're about to leave to go to back to Lafayette. 
yeah, I got that medical for you. You're going to have to go to Arkansas, Little Rock. And this was like eight o'clock at night. I mean, you weren't even like in uniform or no. anything. And I, oh, I think before we left, I told them like, well, my wife's coming with me. And they're like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. So we load up in the plane and we go to Little Rock. The medical crew gets on. It's uh, from Arkansas Children's Hospital up in Little Rock. And so the medical crew gets on and we fly back to Alexandria. And so normal medicals, we wait, like an ambulance comes, the medical crew gets in the ambulance and then they go to the hospital. And we have to wait at the airport till the medical crew gets back. And so me and her are waiting at, in Alexandria. For hours. Yeah, for hours. In the hours. middle of the night. Because we went back to Little Rock. And then did we leave right away? Did we drop them off? I just remember dropping them off. And then like waiting. Yes. Yes. So, so we did have to wait. But I because feel like we waited in Arkansas. We did. Cause normally you do because you, you're, you're stretcher. You need it back for your plane. So they had the patient on the stretcher. You load it up into the ambulance. But I feel like this was like a older child. Like it was, I feel like someone walked on the plane. I don't know if I remember this or not. Well, I don't remember the patient I cause I do, I do a ton of, I yeah, do a ton I don't of those. Remember, so but I, don't I remember, know. I feel like it was like an older child that, you know, could walk. And, uh, but we must have still had to wait for something. Yeah. Cause normally you wait for the stretcher. So they go, they had the patient on the stretcher, you loaded it in into the ambulance and then they go to the hospital and then the ambulance has to bring your stretcher back once they get the patient to the hospital. That So you got to wait for that. I gotcha. got to wait for that. And they're probably not like too worried about it. No, they take their time. They're not in a hurry. So a lot of times we wanted to do the transport there at the airport but it would depend on how the patient's doing and like if you can transfer them over to the ambulance stretcher. And uh, there was a lot of factors. So if the patient wasn't doing good, they'd have to go to the hospital. That was in the beginning. And then like when I got the captain position, it was uh, eight days on, four days off. So I had four days where I could do whatever I want. But eight days were 24 hours a day. They could call, call you for something. They could call me. Or I would be on the schedule. Like they put out a schedule at the end of the day. So like the charter flights or medic, you know. Here so are the, the for sure ones. Yeah, here are the for sure ones. But if you're not on one of those flights, then yeah, you're on call for eight days. How do yeah. you sleep? Uh, you're just like normal. Yeah, like normal. So like he might have a totally normal day, go to bed at a normal time and then they, you know, or stay up late. Like it's a weekend and you're, you know, and then they call you for a flight at one o'clock in the morning or you know, yeah, I did have that when we were living times. in Cade and I didn't know what was going on. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. heard the phone. I only had one of those, though. One time where I had like two back back to back, like a yeah. seven o'clock, p- seven p.m. And then like a eight p.m. the next day. Yeah. yeah. And then I remember you, you kind of got sick. Yeah, like, I kind of got sick because like, like you it's don't like 48 get the, hours not sleeping. Yeah. yeah you don't you get you you sleep kind of during the day because when you get back. Yeah. It's daylight. But then like. You, you can't sleep long during the day, so. Yeah, I remember towards the end of Acadian, they were going to have you go to Ar- uh, Alaska. Oh, yeah, the Alaska and trip. they yeah. were like, and I don't know if you asked them, like, hey, like, can my wife come? Like, because that's a pretty cool, you know, trip, you know, like. And um, they were like, well, yeah, but, you know, she might can go, but um, she's going to have to be like a stewardess. Oh, so, oh, I, oh, I don't remember. They were flying, I yeah. kind of remember it now since yeah. you're saying it. Yeah. Were you a nurse yet? No. Dang. I was you not a nurse. Like, well, she's a nurse. It's fine. Nope. nope. I was <laughs> well, just. Well, yeah, towards the end, you were a nurse. Mm, not on maybe. that trip, though. Anyway, okay. no, not on that trip. Oh. Um, so he, they were supposed to be flying the Duck Dynasty family. Oh. So I was going to have to be a stewardess for the. I'm like, yeah, no. That's so weird. I, I, yeah. <laughs> so it didn't end up happening. I don't. No, if they, they didn't actually, want to spend the money they, to go up there because yeah, it was it going. was when Sarah Palin was running, and I think they were going for some campaign thing, and so they decided to just airline because it, I guess, the cost or whatever. That would have been a fun story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I yeah. was mapping it out. I'd have to stop like right before the border, before I get into Canada to get fuel. It was in the jet, so I could go farther. How long would that have taken? I think it was almost like eight hours. Like it was the full max. Oh, that's not bad. I mean, no. in my head, it's still like a hundred well, hours think, away. Yeah, no. It, I mean, the jet goes fast, but it's like, I think it was like four hours to whatever, North Dakota or wherever you're going to stop for fuel. And then another oh. four hours to Anchorage. How fast does this jet go? That's 440 fast. knots. Yeah. 
It was. I did do a flight from here to Maine, and that was three and a half hours. That's crazy. Yeah, it might have been three and a half hours or something like that because it was. Because you know you're not gonna you got four hours of fuel, so you're not gonna go the full four. So yeah. it had to have been three and a half or three three twelve or whatever. Cross it had to be country less. and the time it takes to drive to Houston. Yep. And you lose that. Pers- I mean, like when you're flying those planes all the time, you lose that that. Uh, reality of what you're doing you how know? far you actually yeah went. how far you've actually gone i mean when we went to maine i'd look at the map and i'd be like man we're only in virginia <laughs> man we're not there yet where i was driving you'd be like finally we made it to virginia yeah, that's right <laughs> yeah and he's not a happy commercial flyer either because you know he's used uh, no, to like hopping used- in yeah and he's like i gotta go through tsa like really uh, you know like this is what i do yeah yeah, not, yeah. and then they, they treat you like tsa treats you like you know you're you're nobody and you basically always get searched always you always oh i got searched over your life yeah. always yeah. you should just wear your captain's outfit yeah. some people did tell me i need to start wearing it so the nice things about working for the leblancs was that you did get to come for some flights yeah. Yeah. So you did get to go to Cancun. I I went to Cancun. You didn't I like Cancun. To... Oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like Cancun. Did you think you would like it? Yes. Yeah, so I got to go to Cancun. I think I went to Where else we did you to get Aruba. to? Aruba, we yeah, to, that's right. Um, Aruba. And then we went we went to California though. Went to one. Oh yeah, I liked that. That yeah, was fun. She liked that one. Um we went to, to Napa. Napa. And we, we went, went down to, the to San Francisco. Stuff. Yeah. But yeah, so you got to go to a few places and then so then what well, I guess it was twenty twenty one I decided to just focus on the flight school. Yeah. Was it twenty twenty one? Was it pre or post COVID? It was post COVID, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And so it was the end of twenty twenty one when I started fully being focused on the flight school. And so and so I've been doing that since then. What's that? Three years now? Almost? Yeah. Wow. Flew on by. Here we are. And that school's doing good. We're busy. Woohoo. Uh, yeah. Woohoo. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we end it. Flight tales. Woohoo. If you made it this far, you listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Aaron for being on today's episode. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us, and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 